Hi everyone. We've got a little video today that we're going to be doing and it's simply how much I've learned from YouTube. We're not going to go into all the camera stuff and the flying of drones like I'm doing at the moment, but we're going to look at the things that I've learned from my viewers and even there are aspects from driving that I've picked up. Let's have a little look. First thing that we're going to talk about is merging turn. Some people are probably cringing already because there's loads of talk all the time on my channel about merge in turn. But I'd like to let everyone understand and know where I was at with it before I started doing YouTube. I understood the concept of merge in turn. I never had an issue with anyone going down to the front of the queue and um, filtering in one after the other, one from one side, one from the other. Never had an issue with it. But I very rarely did it myself. And the reason being is how driving schools are perceived by others. There is a, um, a PR sort of like exercise that um, driving schools should always be trying to do. Um, it doesn't look good if you're doing certain things that people don't approve of and even if those things are okay to do and they're the correct things um, because there's such a mindset and there still is of people going down to the front where it does merge of people pushing in because there is a mindset I generally didn't bother doing it. I used to get in at a suitable time, maybe early, maybe a little bit later, depending on the flow of the traffic. But I wouldn't go all the way down to the front with my roof box on and, uh, and, and filter one from one side and one from the other. Now, what I would do nowadays is a little touch different. Um, I've changed my opinion on it because of the comments from YouTube and my viewers and subscribers um, seeing things from a different perspective um, I understand more now rather than just having a single-minded attitude towards maybe people are pushing in if they're going down towards the front I understand a lot lot more that if you do merge early the people who were in that bigger queuing lane have got to wait for many more people and that annoys them and it causes road rage if everyone just literally just used all the road space when you used it merged from one side one way next to the other um, everyone understands the traffic flow and each of the lanes flows um, in the same manner and at the same speed so my opinion has I wouldn't say changed but it has moved slightly and now what I would do, even with my pupils, I would not necessarily um, force them, but I would strongly encourage them to use all the road space because the more this message gets out to people, the less these merge in turn incidents are gonna happen and it's gonna actually help with road rage or the lessening of it, I should say. So um, that's the first thing that YouTubers changed. It's changed my attitude towards merging turn. The next thing I'd like to talk about is how I now deal with going around cyclists compared to what I used to do maybe 20 years ago when I qualified as a driving instructor. The advice back then was to, when you were passing a cyclist, to never go closer than one metre because they could wobble and fall off, which is good advice for the reasoning, but that gap isn't big enough. We all know nowadays that it's a minimum of one and a half metres, ideally more if possible. But, unfortunately, for the first period of me being a driving instructor, I was passing on wrong information to my students and to my pupils. This obviously wasn't my fault, but through YouTube and through videos I stuck on, maybe right at the start, I remember doing a video on how to pass cyclists. And quite quickly, over the years, it got 
more and more aggression from cyclists saying I was passing way too close. But because the video had been out three or four years before this way of thinking started coming across, it was good at the time, but it wasn't good enough nowadays. So my way of thinking has changed massively. And you'll be glad to know that all my students and all my instructors who are teach and all my viewers get the same message, cyclists at least a metre and a half, more if possible, is the only way to safely go round them. What I'd like to talk about next is undertaking. Um, undertaking, people have asked about undertaking on my channel for ages. Um, is it legal? Is it illegal? And I never ever get drawn on it. There's reasons for that as well. The first reason is that many, many years ago, I knocked a cyclist off. I did a left turn in my car in queue in traffic and the cyclist was coming down the left hand side and it was at the time where we didn't have mirrors on both sides of the car. It was quite early in my driving life and they didn't always have mirrors on um, this left hand side and I literally did a left turn, didn't see him and knocked him off. I went to court over it and the, uh, the solicitor who was representing me tried to argue the point that if you undertake you go to the undertakers and it was from this that I always thought undertaking was illegal. However the judge did um, give me some points on my license for driving without due care and attention because I should have seen him. But there's another scenario which always led me to believe that undertaking was illegal and it was from a mate of mine who, who actually undertook an unmarked police car and he told everyone that he got done for it. He did get done for it but that was the thing that stuck in my head that he undertook the unmarked police car and then the police car gave him points and a fine for it. But it mustn't have been for actually undertaking, because undertaking isn't illegal. It can be dangerous, very dangerous, but it's not actually illegal. So what did the police probably do him for? They probably again did him, same as I got done for when I knocked the cyclist off, driving without due care and attention. So I don't get drawn on it for that reason, although undertaking isn't illegal. I don't get drawn on it because people, if they do undertake, they're going to cause big problems and the police will still do you for it. Um, if you're doing it in a way that you know is, is causing risk or potential problems for people. And the other reason why I don't get drawn on it is because if people know it's, um, I won't say okay to do, but it's not legal, people go off and do it on a driving test they're going to be more than likely failing the driving test if you want to take someone. So has my knowledge changed on this? Yes. And it directly came from YouTube when people were saying uh, undertakings not illegal. I researched it and found it out. Um, it was a little bit of a surprise to me. But there's no in the world I'm ever going to say to anyone you should undertake. You shouldn't. I personally don't think that there should be many scenarios where you should undertake anyone and that's why I always thought for years it was illegal so there you go you learn something new every day the next thing that I'm going to talk about is people's lack of understanding of even the most basic things it can be basic things on how to coordinate the car how to do a gear change um, the operations of signals is a massive one honestly the list is endless but what really kicked this off for me in my shock on how poor people are actually on the road is a video about mini roundabouts that I did that I was absolutely blown away by how people don't understand how many roundabouts should work. Um, 
it comes up quite regularly on the channel as well so can't really be bothered getting into a discussion on how mini roundabouts work here with this today but it amazes me the percentage of people out there who don't understand how basic junctions work and how you should do certain things this doesn't only limit to drivers as well some of the instructors who I see driving around and doing certain things absolutely blows me away also just can't get over some of the habits the instructors have getting out of the car and allowing a pupil to um, reverse their car into a bay on their own um, even using the mobile phone I see instructors still doing it nowadays and it's just a shame I don't have a camera sideways pointing out of my car else I would report people I think most people know that I've never reported anyone but honestly if a driving instructor was using the phone I'd be the first on the phone or on the computer to report them because that's despicable so the level of knowledge of our roads is absolutely awful. Where does this come from though? Well, people often in some of the conversations and discussions that we have on this channel talk about I've been driving for 20 years and grandfather rights don't give, give you that all, all all knowing knowledge if you like. It doesn't work like that. You have to do some further study. Just because you've been doing it for 20 years doesn't mean you've been doing it correctly for 20 years. So people, when they um, when they do get a driving license, think that's me done. They do no further courses. How many of you out there who are watching this have done course a driving course since you've passed your test it'll be interesting and I bet the number would be really really low and that's the point when you pass your test it's only the start of your learning process if we're going to get our roads better we all need to keep studying and keep doing things even a track day gone on about them before as well track days go and do one of them go and do a four-wheel drive course go and get on a push bike get your helmet on and get up get out on the road and see what it's like from a different perspective um, I have got something in the pipeline when we're fully out of lockdown as well I've got someone who is a lorry driver who's gonna allow me in the cab while he's uh, doing his his daily work and we're gonna have a little look from a lorry driver's perspective quite shortly but for now get learning people because knowledge isn't good enough out there that little chat that I've just had brings me nicely on to my final point and it's all about me for this one it's quite a strange one because I don't usually talk about myself but um, YouTube has taught me a lot about myself um, it's taught me that originally before YouTube although my information on driving and teaching was at a high level it wasn't varied enough there wasn't enough from cyclists and lorry drivers and um, all different road users pedestrians as well there wasn't enough it wasn't varied enough to 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 allow me to do my job at my best ability and like I've already alluded to I'm still learning and I always do and that's one thing that's YouTube or that YouTube has been a, a massive massive benefit so uh, the the knowledge diversity that I've now got and keep on adding to so that's one thing the other thing that YouTube when we're talking about me um, the other thing that YouTube has given me it's allowed me to analyze my own teaching when you even put a series out like I do with Erin um, and when you put learning points out constantly every week um, you look at your own way of doing things you look at um, how you're seen from the outside 
and I know it can come across as quite harsh. I remember um, someone saying uh, saying something to someone in my family that your ash is um, quite Sergeant Majorish, and uh, this was from a person who'd passed first time. And the response was, "Well, you passed first time, didn't you?" But I know how I can be perceived, and I've adapted and changed that since I've been doing YouTube. I think now my learning environment in the car has improved because again of comments from my viewers and how people um, have, have answered certain things that have come up in the channel. Um, if you would have done this I, I wouldn't have you as a driving instructor. Well don't take offence by that. All these things are really, really important and have allowed me to improve. So, massive appreciation for everyone's comments and everyone's opinions. I do take them on board and I do listen. And if everyone just literally looked at themselves and a little think about what they could do to improve themselves, Honestly, people do take big strides forward. So, YouTube has been a massive, massive benefit to me as a person and a teacher. So don't forget everyone, there's always stuff that we can pick up and we can learn. This goes for driving too. Um, I always pick up stuff from comments, I always pick up stuff from even uh, trainee driving instructors who are teach. So we're never that all-knowing person on the roads and generally in life as well. So I'd like to thank all my viewers for the contribution that they always make. As I've said, the different perspectives from different road users, whether it be cyclists, whether it be lorries, absolutely everyone is so, so invaluable. And luckily enough, YouTube gives me that platform literally to tell everyone and show everyone what I've learned. So thanks a lot for watching. See you all soon.